Hi, I'm Ewan Bros, a first year marketing and advertising student at Lisbeth University, and this is my short and informative vlog just on the different things and attributes that make up the Sony PlayStation uh, product series. I'm going to talk about several things. I'm going to talk about the marketing channels used by Sony and sort of how they work with other stars to get the PlayStation out there. I'm going to talk about the product classification, how the PlayStation can be classed as a product and its intangibility or tangibility. I'm going to be talking about the pricing techniques deployed by Sony in terms of marketing and selling the product. I'm also going to be talking about the product life cycle uh, and the product life cycle in relation to the BCG matrix and sort of how the product life cycle sort of evolves, changes throughout the, the, uh, the PlayStation's life. And finally at the end I'm going to be talking about uh, my year's learning and just like a quick reflection on sort of how I feel like the first year's gone for me. Uh, thank you. Just a quick introduction to both the products and the organisation. Uh, Sony is a Japanese electronics manufacturer and PlayStation, as we all know, it's a video game console series. Uh, it was originally released in 1994 in Japan and the PS1 was the first console to ship 100 million units. It was originally released to compete with the Sega Saturn and Nintendo 64. Sony have currently released four generations of the console along with more minor upgrades to the series such as the PS1 Slim and the PS4 Pro. In terms of classifying the PlayStation series as a uh, as a product, it, it could say it is a shopping good, uh, a purchase made periodically by the consumer. It's also a tangible product, but it does have both tangible and intangible features, including the add-ons and software updates. Uh, and it's a consumer product that the customer, in the process of selecting and purchasing, usually compares on such attributes such as sustainability, quality, price, or style. Pricing technique and the methods used by Sony. How is each generation of console different in pricing? Sony tend to use a price skimming, which maximises revenue at launch. They capitalise on the fact that the console is highly anticipated and new people will pay premium for first use. However, usually within the first six months, uh, that sort of fades. And post six months after launch, uh, the drop in price allows Sony, uh, Sony to further increase sales as less casual gamers sort of buy the product. Uh, and that can also increase market share and they allowed the PS4 to become a lost leader when the rival Xbox was launched and that did actually work because Sony do have the leading market shares in 2017 in America with 39.5% of the market share and that is what we call penetration pricing where a competitor sort of outprices a, another competing brand uh, for the sake of increasing market share. Marketing channels and how are they used by Sony? Sony has strong links with its traditional intermediaries. It uses a direct channel distribution from manufacturer straight to retailer. It cuts out middlemen uh, and it leads these intermediaries in order to access a wider group of concern, consumers whilst also minimising the cost of distribution. It's much cheaper for Sony to sell through an intermediary, whether online such as Amazon or a third party store such as Walmart, than for Sony to sell through their own bricks and mortar stores. Uh, and it also increases the convenience for Sony as using existing retail resources can provide your customer with further convenience. Neil Richardson and J uh, Neil Kelly, 2015. Legal issues can also be considered by Sony, different rules and regulations in different territories that can be circumvented with the use of indirect distribution. And it also increases customer value. Uh, they do use intensive distribution, but that is at the expense of exclusivity and low distribution costs, as they have to ship it to more people. In terms of the PLC, the product life cycle, Sony has managed to consistently expand the life cycle of the PlayStation with each new generation of console. However, this cannot always accurately be forecasted. Sony has found many new uses for the PlayStation with the addition of the Blu-ray DVD compatibility in the PlayStation 3 and the form factor and if the changing tangibility of the product with the PS4 Slim, the PS4 Pro, which gave updated hardware and improved game experience. And they've also sort of further increased their uh, product lifecycle, you know, by offering new features on such as the PS4 network. And that uh, the usage has doubled from 54 million to over 90 million in 2019. www.statista.com. And in terms of the BCG matrix in relation to the product lifecycle of the PlayStation, each generation has gone through different stages depending on where it is in the life cycle, obviously. The original PlayStation, when that was launched, you could say that was a star product. It's Sony's an early adopter, it's a first to market product. And it brought about high growth in revenue, but it did require a lot of uh, reinvestment. Uh, 
in order to maximise the ROI for Sony. A much more contemporary example would be the PlayStation 4. It's generally classed as a cash cow. It's got high market share, low growth. It's a well-established and successful product, but it is coming towards the end of its lifespan in 2020 and a replacement is imminent. Quick conclusion, uh, marketing channels, they're crucial for Sony as a means of getting the product out for as little a cost as possible, as well as product extension. I think they're the most important things. So a product extension, it keeps the product new, it keeps it fresh in the minds of people. It doesn't seem uh, make the product seem out of date. And yeah, that's just why the, the PlayStation is as successful as it is. In terms of reflecting on my year learning, I can use the Gibbs Reflection Cycle, University of Edinburgh 2019. In terms of my attendance and grades, my behaviour towards my studies in terms of individual modules. Uh, first semester, my attendance was over 80%, but that dropped in the second semester. But I know to address that. Uh, and I know that the quality of engagement and the quality of teaching is there. I just thought I need to access it more often. Uh, and yeah, it's just all about improving attendance, making sure deadlines are met 100% of the time. Don't learn the library facilities too much and engage more in lectures and become better at referencing and also to become more self-aware and responsible regarding my studying. Thank you.